Welcome back to Year 10 Physics, Electric Circuits, Lesson 3. Quick recap to activate prior knowledge on what you've learnt in Lesson 1 and 2. Lesson 1 was looking at components and their symbols. Lesson 2 was learning about two rules relating to series circuits, as highlighted in green. In blue, you see the learning objectives here for this lesson, where we'll be learning about parallel circuits and also where voltmeters and ammeters that's, that's part C here of the specification part C is looking at where we put voltmeters and ammeters in parallel circuits and we covered series circuits last week okay let's get on with the learning so we now that we part way down page 11 and as I mentioned we've covered rule 1 and rule 2 actually rule 3 is to do with CD circuits but it's to do with the resistance in CD circuits it's a very very simple rule as Mr. Ruddy's put put here it's easy to find the total resistance in a CD circuit, you just add up all the resistances. i quickly go through one with you. So the two resistances in series, we've got a 30 ohm and a 50 ohm resistor. So you just add the two together. What could be easier? Just remember the units for resistance ohms. That's the Greek letter for, for ohms. Question 12 and 13, you can do, I'm sure you'll have no problem with that. At the bottom of the page, all you need to do is put in four words one two three four and you have to choose between whether you think there's an increase a decrease or stays the same When you go from circuit P to circuit Q, what's the difference? Well, there's two extra bulbs added. So how does that affect the voltage across each bulb? This is recapping back to lesson two. And what you should remember is the voltage is split up between the bulbs. So, so therefore, let's say there's nine volts across that battery and nine volts here in circuit p you'd have nine volts across this bulb however here that would be these three bulbs would have three volts each because the nine volts is split divided between the three bulbs so the voltage across each bulb is going to decrease i want you to think about how the resistance, the current, and the brightness will change. I've put a <clears throat> little annotation here on the right-hand side to help you with that thinking. Use eFocus software to help. I'll show you quickly where that is now. On the school website, if you select underneath purple area, focus e-learning there and here within electricity and you go to electric circuits you'll remember this from the previous lesson and what you could do is add in an extra bulb 
see how the current changes, how the voltage ch changes across each one. And you can change the size of the battery. Just remember to switch on the circuit. Okay. Going back to our booklet here, parallel circuits. So very simply, parallel circuits are where you have branches in the circuit. The current can flow in more than one direction. So you can read the notes at the top there. It just explains why parallel circuits are better in most cases than series circuits. They may be more complicated, but they do a lot more than a series circuit could. There's two ru rules you've got to learn. Rule four, current splits up when flowing through the branches of a parallel circuit. Use the following circuit to calculate the current readings at A1, A2, and A3. Then compare your results with table one. Now, if you were in a lesson, we'd set this up with three ammeters. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to write in two values. Let's say we've got three amps flowing through A1, and we've got 1.5 amps flowing through A2. Very simply, what's happening is out of those three amps going through A1, half goes that way, half goes that way. So what you would find is A2 is 1.5 amps, A3 is 1.5 amps, and a simple formula therefore would mean A1 equals A2 plus A3. Just think of it. I know Sometimes thinking of electricity is more difficult because you can't see it. I sometimes consider when I'm teaching it, thinking of this as a road. You've got three cars coming down this road. Half the cars go that way through A2 and half the cars go, go that way. It doesn't need to be half and half. It depends on what these two components are here. Because let's say that the top bulb, for example, had a higher resistance than the bottom bulb, that would mean that, that less current would go through that top bulb and more current would go through the bottom bulb. However, the sum of A2 and A3 must add up to A1, as the equation below shows. Before we go any further, let's go back and look at this software we loaded up earlier. And we'll go now from a CD circuit to a parallel circuit. And in this parallel circuit, you can see we've got two bulbs in parallel. At the moment, they're all switched off. So if we switched on here, nothing happens. If we switch on one bulb, one bulb comes on. Notice when I switch that second bulb on, the voltage, sorry, the brightness of the bulb remained the same. You don't know what happened to the voltage because we haven't put the voltmeters in. Look now, we got 1.5 volts from the battery and 1.5 volts across the two bulbs. It doesn't matter how many bulbs we put in parallel, you will still get 1.5 volts across them. Regardless of if I switch these on and off, it still it will still come back on at 1.5 volts. If I introduce ammeters, what you can see here is that you've got 0.15 amps flowing through the top bulb, 0.15 through the bottom, 
just like cars going along a road, they then merge and through this ammeter on the right hand side, 0.15 plus 0.15 equals 0.3. Now, you, you can play around with those values. If I put another battery in, so we've got three volts, I'll knock the ammeters off, three volts across the, the batteries, you also get three volts across the two bulbs in parallel. So that, that's one of the two rules. Let's go back to the booklet and apply those rules here. Uh, write the conclusion that links the current in the whole circuit compared to the current flowing through all the branches of the circuit. What we can see here is that, again, A1 equals A2 plus A3. Let's, let's take this top line here as an example. A1 is 0.5 equals A2 is 0.31 and A3 is 0.19. You can see that's true. And you could do the same for here and indeed for that third and final row. So the conclusion is that it, it's the rule then really, isn't it? That the current that flows through the battery adds up to the current flowing through the individual bulbs. Or, it's just a matter of restating this. Current splits up when flowing through the branches of a parallel circuit. And we can just use that to help us answer question one. Current through A1. Splits and flows through A2 and A3. You could improve that by just giving it an example as I've done there. Okay, question two. If current is flowing through the battery from positive to negative, what is happening to the current at point P and point Q? Positive to negative. So if the current is flowing in this direction, what we can say at P is the current splits and at Q it merges and flows merrily around the rest of the circuit. So, What's happen happening to the current at P? Current splits. Q, current merges. Why has a variable resistor been included in the test circuit? I'll verbally give you the answer here. You need to then pause the video and write down your answer in your own words. The variable resistor, remember that's this here, change pen, allows the size of the current to change. So if we didn't have a variable resistor, we would only be able to have one set of results, perhaps that first one. But by changing the variable resistor, we can change the size of the current flowing through the circuit, which would have happened here and here. Question 2C, why do some of the values within table 1 lack precision? Well, it's because they haven't been given to two decimal places. If you look at the first two rows, 
if the answer to A1 is 0 0.50, you've got to write it down as 0 0.50 for the right, correct level of precision. And there's one there as well. Okay, you can answer those. And now moving on to this questions three and four. You can do those, that's why there's a red asterisk next to them. Question five, why did one of the bulbs have a smaller current reading? Right, this is a bit more difficult. Or oh, I should say you haven't been given the knowledge to answer this. <coughs> if you look at these two bulbs, I'll highlight in green. If they were identical in terms of resistance, they would have the identical current flowing through them. If one resistance was larger than the other, it would have a smaller current flowing through it. So why did one of the bulbs have a smaller current reading? You'd have to say because it had a larger resistance. So that's your answer to question five. If one bulb is unscrewed, what happens to the other bulb and its brightness? It would be unaffected. Moving on to page 16 is the fifth and final rule, which states the voltage across the battery equals the voltage across each branch. We can look at that again using this piece of software. You can see we've got three volts across a battery and each branch has got three volts across it. We could change the number of batteries. Each battery's got 1.5 volts. Two batteries, three. So you've got three volts across the two bulbs. 4.5 volts across the bulbs. We've actually blown the bulbs there, look. 4.5 volts. Because those particular bulbs can only take up to just over three volts. Six. And you can see it. As we change the voltage across the battery, it changes across each branch of the circuit. So to think that the, the way I like to think about that is, let's say this was a six volts power supply. So you'd have six volts this side and zero volts this side of the power supply. So every bit of this circuit that I'm highlighting in green is connected to that zero volt part of the circuit. Then the other side, the left hand side, let's choose yellow. Everything in yellow is at six volts. You only change the voltage or there's only a change or drop in the voltage or potential difference if the current goes through a resistance. We assume this wire has got negligible or zero resistance. If we now look at question seven, it says if the PD across the power pack is nine volts, let's change it from six to nine. What would be the reading at V1, V2, V3? Well, that's going to be nine volts, nine volts, nine volts. Pretty straightforward. Question eight, if you added another branch with a bulb and placed a voltmeter V4 across it, what would the potential difference be? Just remember potential difference PD is the same as voltage. So that would also be nine volts. Question nine. Let's look at question nine together. If the voltage across V1 is 18 volts, let's label a few things. That's 18 volts. Then again, think of it this way. Everything this side is going to be 18 volts up to there. And everything that's on the negative side here is going to be zero volts. So all this here, zero, 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 zero. zero. If we look at V1, we zoomed in on V1, 
you can see you think of it like this you could have you've got zero volts this side and 18 volts this side so across uh, v1 you've got 18 volts it's the same here yellow on the left hand side green on the right so 18 volts same and so on the only tricky part of this question is I'll use a different colour to show you is this part here because what happens here well what happens here the 18 volts is split between V3 and V4 so you'll have 9 volts and if I just use a different colour pen to show that so you'd have 18 volts here yes you've got 0 volts over here in between you've got 9 volts so the potential difference or drop from 18 to 9 is 9 volts and from 9 to 0 is 9 volts let's apply that here V2 V3 and V5 V5 is the one at the bottom if you look at that you've got 18 volts across it so that one is straightforward 18 volts why are the two bulbs in the same branch di branch dimmer than bulbs on their own branch because they have a smaller voltage across them 9 volts and if they've got a smaller voltage across them they'll have a smaller current flowing through them next page is just for you to write up do your rules for a parallel and series circuit do it in a way of, of a mind map a series circuit there three rules there for a series circuit two rules there for a parallel circuit that's the end of lesson three make sure you've done the retrieval quiz before the lesson starts and the plenary assessment at the end to give you feedback on what you've learned and obviously complete the booklet see you next time bye